Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Illustrator scripting quick tip tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be going over the object model inside of Illustrator scripting or basically the hierarchy of how things are run. If you're familiar with After Effects scripting at all, you may be slightly familiar with how this works and the general idea, but basically you start up at the application level and then from that object you can branch out and get many other things such as the project, the open compositions, and a whole bunch of other information. And this this is the sort of macro perspective of how scripting works in any program. So today I'm going to be going over sort of how it works uh, based on this graphic here and sort of showing you in the program where that's located and how you can go about learning and accessing this information in a hierarchical way. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub to get updates when we release code. And down there, follow us on Instagram as well. If you're not a member of the Discord server, come on and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the channel and get cool perks at the same time, you can become a member on our YouTube page and get these cool loyalty badges, as well as tons of cool perks at these different member levels from member to supporter to premium supporter up to VIP. So when we load up the scripting guide in Illustrator, basically what it shows us here is we start off with the application and everything can be derived from that. After Effects is a little bit different because you have a separate system, file, folder, and socket object which can be accessed. Uh, but just to focus on Illustrator itself and the application, this is the object model we can use. So as you can see, note that in the layer and group item classes, these can contain nested objects of the same class, which can in turn contain additional nested items. So basically you can start at the application level, make your way down and learn all about the different things and different layers and things can also contain similar elements. For example, you may have a placed item, which you use the file place function to place an image on your canvas, or you may have a linked item, which are very similar, but can be defined as similar things with possibilities of having things like masks, fills, and all sorts of other properties. So many of these overlap, and some of them are completely unique and individualized. And it does say here at the bottom, uh, our JavaScript does contain other things like the file and folder objects, which we can see are already defined well here in the After Effects object model. So let's just go ahead and give a nice brief overview of most of the things here and uh, how we can use them. So we start off at the very top of our application. That is the application level. Adobe Illustrator itself is this application object. And of course, if we reference the uh, scripting guide here, there is our application object, so we can look at that as our first base level. And we have access to certain properties and methods, properties being information that we can learn about it. For example, I'm wearing a blue shirt. Uh, that is a property of me. It's not an action you take, but it's something observable, uh, which can be changed or sometimes can be read only. In terms of methods, if we continue scrolling down, if you're newer to programming, methods are essentially the types of functions we can run on things. And these are sort of actual actions which execute some other code and sometimes require an input in order to change the way we do things. For example, uh, a method example in Illustrator could be to create a new document. Um, this may require some arguments, like what do you want the name of the document to be? Or what would you like the dimensions of the document to be? Would you like to use a document preset? These are the sort of methods and arguments we can use as well. So starting up at the application level, uh, if you want to sort of learn on your own or know how to link the uh, object model to the actual scripting guide, you basically want to look at what you're looking at, in this case, the application. And now that we're looking at our application object, we see everything that is accessible inside of it. And one thing of how we can start to sort of dive down the rabbit hole is when you have a type here, you can see we have a type document. This one is a type of Boolean, which is a normal programming type, or a string, which is a normal programming type. But when you have a specific blue uh, linked type here, that is another thing inside of the scripting guide or inside of the, the object model viewer that will allow us to learn more and dive deeper. So you can see here we have document. And if we go back to our guide, that is the next level down here. We could also access the text font or the printers and a bunch of other preset lists here. 
But once you go down to the document, now we can have access to a whole other set of properties and uh, methods for a document. And a document in Illustrator is simply this kind of open thing here. Uh, you might consider it an artboard or a canvas, but it's the entire containment for this tab. And you can continue to go down further into these guides, uh, into the different objects, and see here now we have access to things like our artboards or brushes, and you can continually click on these to see access to more things in the object model. So we just went from application to document, and then we found the brushes and a bunch of other information, the artboards. These are all accessible from the object directly. So this is one way you can sort of start getting started uh, going down through the hierarchy of things using the scripting guide, which will be linked in the description, and you can see all the accessible and readable properties. It will tell you what is required, if you can change them, whether they're read-only or not, and a whole slew of other information. And this will help really solidify things in your head. If you're an Illustrator perfectionist and are already very familiar with this, this should already be basically built into your knowledge. Uh, just by using Illustrator so many times, you'll know that a document is within an application, the layers are contained inside of the document, etc, etc. Same with After Effects. If you're familiar with After Effects very well, you know how the hierarchy works. You have a application which contains a project, uh, and the project will contain items like compositions, footage, folders, and these can be further broken down into layers, effects, properties, and that sort of thing. So yes, this knowledge does come intuitively as you learn Illustrator, but not everyone is starting off as an Illustrator expert or someone who is well versed in Illustrator. So this is sort of a good way to begin navigating uh, the different complexities and simplicities of Illustrator scripting and will allow you to really move forward. So maybe let's say, for example, you wanted to learn about gradients. Well, we know that the gradient here links back up with our document and that's from our application. So that can be a sort of starting point. If you're having an issue and you look at this guide and you're like, well, I don't remember accessing my document, but I'm trying to get this gradient. And that might be a problem because if it's linked directly to that, it's a property you need to go into before accessing those gradients. Or for example, if you wanted to learn what a placed item is, which I briefly described earlier, you need to have a layer which needs to be linked to a document and the application. So if there's sort of any of those things missing in the way you're calling or scripting it, uh, then you know that you need to go back and learn something or access another property. So I can give a sort of reference to a common mistake I make nowadays, maybe seven years into scripting for After Effects. Whenever I add layers, I almost always make this mistake where you need to grab the app, the project, and the composition that you want to add layers to. But you can't just say, okay, I'm in my composition now. I want to add text, or I want to add a solid, or I want to add a piece of footage. You need to reference the layers themselves and then add it. So it's these little things. You may just be missing one property, uh, and this will help you really uh, solidify your programming knowledge and the structured way everything works. And really, as you start to learn more and more, you won't need to reference this pretty much ever. You'll just be able to look inside the guide. So like I'm saying, if you want to see, I want to start off learning the application stuff, okay? Let's learn about the document. So we'll go into the document, we read about it, what we have access to, and you can really just go down a rabbit hole. Ooh, I have crop options. What are my crop options? What, what does scripting allow me to access? Well, it looks like we have Japanese and standard options for a crop box. I may need to look some of that up, but it does show me what's available. Or for example, the default fill color for my document, that's a very commonly used thing, and that requires a color object. And as you can see, we have many color objects to choose from. So the rabbit hole really just goes deeper and deeper. And this will, yes, be a bit overwhelming if you're new to programming, but once you have a sort of general knowledge of how to navigate this, uh, you'll really learn things incredibly fast and have no issues uh, picking up on new concepts. And this doesn't apply just for Illustrator scripting. This expands on to every other type of scripting and even programming. It's really about learning the documentation, learning how you can continue to learn, and having uh, an object model like this really allows you to have a macro perspective, zoom out, look at everything that is possible, and whatever your use case is, whether you need to learn a specific thing like, oh, I want to learn about the documents, or I want to learn about the layer stack, how does that work? Or maybe you want to learn about the different tools and if you can access those. 
you'll be able to find that knowledge inside of this macro view here and then break it down if you're missing any elements or even reveal that if I have a layer, I actually have access to all these other things as well. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I wanted to give a relatively detailed overview on the scripting object model. This is sort of the macro perspective of it all. If you're just starting scripting and wanna know what's possible or want to begin the journey of learning what is possible, um, which is incredibly similar to how the program works itself, many of the actions you take in the program can totally be scripted. And once you make that connection of what is possible and what is not, you'll be really be on your way to to mastering scripting and once you have most of this down it'll really just become integral knowledge in your brain and if you're just learning you'll be able to quickly navigate through the guide and quickly understand how to access the different objects and make the connection of how things are hierarchically displayed and contained within each other if you enjoyed the video hit the thumbs up button down below hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel and down in the description you can follow us on github to get updates when code goes live as well as down there follow us on instagram for other updates if you're not following us and joining the discord server make sure you do that and get help with scripting extensions plugins expressions submit tutorial ideas and many more things and of course if you'd like to help support the youtube channel keep these videos going and keep their quality improving become a member supporter premium supporter or vip on youtube and get these cool perks as well like uh, monthly live streams other cool perks but that's going to do it again for this video guys thanks for watching we'll see you next time